What's up guys, in today's video we're going to model this mechanical piece here from scratch in Blender. Now this one's a little bit tricky because it's a very abstract shape and if you don't know how to approach the shape and create that first, you're not going to be able to create this model at all. So this one's going to show you a very easy approach and kind of give you my thought process behind creating this. So let's get started. If you're brand new to Blender or even a bit experienced, we have two different programs that would best suit you. The first one is for complete beginners. That's our hard surface accelerator program. You'll learn everything in under two weeks, and that's not my opinion. That is a fact based on thousands and thousands of students taking this course. And we also have our hard ops and box cutter program if you want to learn those modeling add-ons. So I'll link both of those in the description if you want to take a look. So the first thing we need to do is start with a cylinder or even a circle. I think a circle will be easier here because of the approach we're going to be taking. Now we're going to have to use sub D later on and I'll explain why, but because of that we're going to need to use something lower like 16 vertices because the sub D will obviously increase the resolution when we add it. So the first thing I want to do is create a circle and just delete half of the circle, okay? And then I just want to take this piece, duplicate it, and rotate this in negative 90 degrees, kind of like this. And then I want to move this over here and kind of get like the, the general shape going on more or less. And I'm actually going to flip this. I'm going to rotate this this way and then rotate this in that direction, okay? And this is kind of more or less the, uh, the shape we want to go with. Now I also want to move this down just a little bit, maybe over to there. And then I also want to move this one over here. Reason being is because when we use the mirror, it needs to offset correctly. And now we basically just have to create that abstract shape and join everything together. And um, this is kind of how I'm going to approach it. I think Ryu dropped a tutorial on a very similar shape a couple years back, I'll put it on the screen somewhere now. Uh, but it's kind of the same approach more or less. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete out this vertex here. And what do I want to do for this one? Let me think. Let's, let's first join these together, okay? And then Shift 1 to join those together using machine tools. And then if I press Control Shift B, I can add in some extra loops here. And those don't need to be spaced out perfectly. They just need to be more or less even. Okay, so something like that. And then if I go into top view, I can symmetrize this way. And then I can also symmetrize down this way. But before I do that, um, I need to move this up here. All right, so if I were to take this vertex right here and extrude it and then mirror it, it's not going to be a perfect circle over here. So what I actually want to do first is I want to get this moved there, but at the same time, I also want to make sure that this area here is up higher. So what I'm actually going to do is delete these two connections, press the L key. I'm going to kind of move that up to here and then just reconnect it. And I can even delete out like this half if I wanted to. It doesn't matter though. And let me just control shift B, kind of slide these over. And then we'll just run a, a mirror. And now this should actually mirror more properly. Perfect. So that looks good to me. And what I could even do is go in here and use something like loop tools to relax this a little bit. But I think it'll be fine because we're going to be using a sub D. And now all I need to do is apply this mirror and we're just going to go ahead and hold the F key to fill this and then fill this. This is very simple. Just hold the F key and then hold the F key here. Select everything, shift N. All right. Now we have a basic shape like this. Now what we need to do is refine this shape so that way it's kind of following the reference photo a bit more accurately. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this entire area, E to extrude. I might even expand that selection a little bit. We'll kind of go E to extrude here and kind of move that over. And then notice how it's kind of curving down more or less. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissolve that one and then maybe dissolve this area here because what I want to do and then delete this area what I'm going to do here is fill these two okay 
And then all I need to do is connect up these two areas over here. So I might even just double tap G to slide that out a bit more. And then I'm gonna add in a loop there, add in a loop here. And just to make that even, I'll add in two loops right there, okay? Now literally all we need to do is select these, shift one with machine tools or M, merge at center until these are all connected and then just get that symmetrized over and get that dissolved. And we could even use a mirror modifier just to get the bottom cleaned up and then just dissolve that out. Actually, we can leave it. Okay, so now we have something a little bit more, you know, following the, the design more or less. Now what I might do is come in here, kind of move that down. So it's kind of uh, having like an even transition, I guess you could say. And let me go ahead and just dissolve that out again. And add the mirror first, get that dissolved, just like that. Okay, now we have something a little bit more like following this direction. Now, in the reference photo, this area is a little bit elongated. So I'm going to take this face, press the O key for proportional editing, and then we're just going to can take both of these and then just basically scale this a bit on the Z. Could even move that in a bit, just so we have that type of effect going on, which is exactly what I want. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is just add in a loop here, join that up, and I can just disconnect that. And just to be able to use quick symmetry, I'm gonna reset the origin to the geometry, get that moved down. Okay, that should be fine. And then notice how on the reference photo, there's almost like a little cylinder. I'll get it highlighted on the screen, but there's kind of a little cylinder in the opposite direction once again. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go in, gonna add in a cylinder, do 16 vertices, rotate this, scale this down a bit. And all I really want to do here is dissolve all of this, or delete it rather. I'm gonna move that right to about there, scale this up, maybe scale that a bit on the Z. and just kind of get that placed, you know, roughly in the correct location. And now all I need to do is go in here and just delete out this junk. So we're gonna go in, just delete these faces completely, join these together, and then as you might expect, we can just do some quick joins. It's very simple. And then just get rid of that. I'm gonna fill that in, okay? And then what we can do is just get this whole area filled as well. I think the quickest way would just be to fill this and then literally go in here and then just join these together like so. You could slide that if you want it to be more even, but it's really not a big deal. And then just symmetrize to that side. And now we kind of have, you know, that connection over here. Kind of a, It's kind of what I was going for, basically. All right, so now what we need to do is run a sub D. Now before I do that, I just noticed that's not connected there. Let me just fix that. Okay, and this all looks good to me, except this area is a bit bit of a mess. Just merge that over. And there we go. So now we basically have the general shape that we're going for, all right? Now what I'm going to do is add a sub D, but I don't want the edges to collapse like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to select sharp edges. And then we're going to right click to mark a crease, make sure that's set to a value of one. And I don't want this crease right here, just the outer edges. So you can always go in and reduce that to zero. Okay. And now if I run the sub D with a level of one, it's going to hold those edges for us. All right. So I can right click to shade auto smooth and we can just apply that sub D and make sure you save your scene by the way, in case of a crash. So we're gonna go in, apply that sub D, now we have a higher resolution. And um, basically at this point, I'm just going to go limited dissolve, set this to 0.1, you can kind of remove some excess stuff, but I'll just leave it alone. Anyways, what we're gonna do here is first add in the cylinder, and now that we've used the sub D and whatever to create the shape, we can go back to our higher poly cylinder. So I'm gonna rotate this here, 
we're going to run a different spoolie in there. Then we can duplicate this cylinder, do the same thing to this area. I'm going to kind of scale this up like so. And just keep duplicating these. We can reuse them pretty easily. Make sure you press Shift D to duplicate. Then we're going to run a Boolean over here. Just like that. And then we're going to run one more Boolean over here in this area. It's going to be a lot smaller though. And actually before we do that, let me just delete that. What we're going to actually do is add in a cube and just get in here. Just run a difference boolean over there, pretty simple. All right, and then we're just gonna do one more. We can use an ever scroll to recover this cutter and then just duplicate it over to this side. Kind of like that. Now there's not a lot of space here. It's probably pulled forward a bit more. So what I could do uh, if I really wanted to mess with it is I could go in here and you know extend this a bit with proportional editing. Depends how you know much you want to obsess over it, but you could do something like that. Okay, pretty simple. Let's do another power save here. And we more or less have the shape that we want. Now what I'm gonna do here is recover this cutter. We're just gonna make a little detail here on the inside. You to extrude and then turn off proportional editing with the O key. Just scale that a bit along the normals. And then I can just go in here and just make like a little, you know, shape here on the inside, kind of like that. Looks good. And then I'm just gonna go to the outer area here and run a chamfer, just like that. Can symmetrize to the other side. And that's basically how we create this shape. So I'm just gonna add in a very, very small holding bevel. You could also do this with a bevel shader. So let's just go ahead and render this. So I'm gonna go ahead and go here into rendering mode and it's gonna open Material Works. If you don't own Material Works, this is our texturing plugin. You can get that in the description below. I'm gonna turn on the HDRI panel here to turn on some lighting. And then basically, I'm just gonna give this piece like, uh, like an aluminum, basically. All right, and then all we're gonna do is add in a plane. I'm just gonna scale that up. Right, we already have like a pretty nice looking result here. For now, I'll just keep the floor, this white color here, it's fine. And you could also just use like a basic material because it's just gonna be for the floor, it's not a big deal. All right, so now what I wanna do, just for fun, I'm gonna turn on this bevel shader, so that way we have a nice bevel on the object. If you don't like the way the aluminum's flowing, you can also go in here to transform and get that rotated the other direction. You can kind of see what that does. Put that back to zero, it's gonna flow in the other direction. See what I mean? So, you know, complete customizability, customization, whatever the word is. And now what we're gonna do, just for a little bit more enhancement, is we're gonna add in some wear and tear. So with Material Works, you can actually go in here and turn on this wear button, which is pretty cool, and it adds a wear and tear. Now for this particular object, especially in the reference photo, the wear and tear is gonna be on the edges, on the convex area. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set this to edge and that's gonna constrain it to the edge. And uh, we don't want dents, you're not gonna really see too much. We're gonna, gonna instead just use some scratches here. So I'll turn on scratches and you're still not gonna see too much and that's because what we need to do here is we need to increase the samples a little bit, just a little bit higher and then we also need to just kinda of mess with some of these settings here can also increase the width, and once you increase the width, you're gonna see it kind of expands along the edges. So if I zoom in, I know cycles is a bit blurry, but you can kind of see that expands along the edges pretty nicely. So you can just add that for a small visual effect. We also have other scratches in here you can choose from. Basically, you would just go to variation B, get like a different variation. One thing we do need to update is uh, so it retains the settings. We're hopefully gonna get an update out for that soon. But either way, it's not a huge issue. And now you have this nice wear and tear effect kind of on the edge of the object, which is great. So now all we need to do is just do a very simple render. I'm gonna press Shift A, gonna go to Camera, View, Align View, Align Active Camera to View. And 
I'm just gonna leave this on 50 millimeter focal length for this particular render. Just kind of get that set up. If you've seen my videos before, you kind of know my rendering process is very, very simple. I'm not doing anything crazy. I think this looks better at a lower focal length, in my opinion. You can just kind of get that nice and set up. Something like that. And just a very, very simple render. Did not take too much time at all. And to be honest, I kind of like this white backdrop. I think it looks clean. I might even keep it a little bit higher so we have that nice shadow. It just kind of depends like how much of a shadow you want. It can kind of enhance the render a little bit in my opinion. So there's a very simple render, nothing crazy. And the last thing I'm gonna do here is just rotate the HDRI a bit. You can try like 90 degree increments. Sometimes you'll find, you know, different positions look a little bit better. You could even try 235 or what is it? Three, uh, well, 360 would just be zero. So I think we'll just stick with zero degrees. And this is totally fine. And there we go. So that's it guys, that is how you make this very simple shape here from scratch in Blender. And again, if this is a bit too fast paced or you don't really know how to use these tools as effectively, we can fix that problem for you very, very quickly with either the hard surface accelerator, that's if you're a beginner, you'll learn everything in under 14 days. And if you're more experienced, you can grab our hard ops and box cutter program and that'll teach you all the different modeling tools very, very efficiently. And again, as always, all resources will be linked in the description so you can take a look at them, see if they're going to help your workflow and make a decision that way. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.